All right, I've got a challenge now. I, I need to make a mortise that comes from here through this piece of wood out to here. It's long, it's steep, and it's got to be in the shape of a square. And I don't know exactly how I'm going to get that thing accurate, but uh, I'll let you know when I come up with an answer. So what I ended up doing was taking uh, two planks and lining them up with um, marks where the, uh, the other piece joined it. And that's the angle that I want. And what's nice about this is the width of these planks allows for the drill to just barely squeeze through. And what it does is just keep it keep it going straight in. Um, so I don't need to worry about that. I just need to use my eye and line the auger bit up with the angle. Point and squirt. And I, I felt it go. Do you see daylight? Because I do. It's blew up day. Needless to say, there's a little bit of anxiety going on. No point with this piece is to not have any metal in the in the wood so we can't glue and screw piece by piece together which would be ideal sliding in you're going to see where you can get glue on for me up here Well, I'm not going to film the rest of this bullshit. Well, it was a long day. I'm trying to give you an, an idea of what's been going into this. You caught me uh, in a failure because I put things in backwards being a space cadet. I thought it would be a half hour glue up process and it turned into a three hour struggle. And this is the result after our fiasco glue up which ended working out, working out in the end. Um, I've got my slide plugs installed, glued. These, these are all met up really nicely. So when we were all done with our glue up, got a slight wedge in the dovetail there that fits snug. Left it clamped for two days, even though the, the bottle says clamp for 30 minutes. <laughs> and it's holding. So then I put I put the, the dovetail plug back in, and once that's cut off clean, I'm gonna glue on some wings to cap the end of the table and keep it from, from uh, cupping and bowing. Uh, through the, throughout the seasons and hopefully that will strengthen this vulnerable end grain right here but that wood is so hard I'm not I'm not worried about it now it's detail time and I'm going to put asymmetrical dovetail plug here because um, Hinoki is a softer wood and and I all of our stress is right on this joint okay so I'm gonna make sure that that's strong and, and in areas it, it became a bit we got some ugliness happening, and um, I've got a remedy for that. It, it has to do with uh, plugs that I'm making, and the, the, the end shape will be more like yin and yang. Right now it's just like a cat's eye, and I'll embed that in there. It'll beautify it and strengthen it. A teak dovetail plug, about 5 eighths thick. Okay. Now we successfully joined. Makes me feel a whole lot more confident about the strength of that foot there. Be nice to learn. Chances are you'll end up working for one.
Now what I did for these, uh, I guess I call them the wings of the table, I put them close to the original tabletop planks and drew my dovetail plug shapes on and, and chiseled them out and routed them out. So I wanted that meat to, uh, to glue to. So now we're getting ready to sink our plugs in, but first I have to uh, finish routing out the depth like I, like I did over here. And then we'll be ready to stick the plugs in. It's the big bird. And there he goes. We lost him. There he is. Boyke doesn't like the big bird. What's the matter, Boyke? You don't like the big bird? A problem here is that this piece of walnut was a uh, threshold in a farmhouse that was built decades ago and the doors pivoted on some sort of a dowel hinge and here we have the, uh, the two holes. So what I thought I'd do is uh, search for some knots that I could uh, fit into the, the holes and I found them. Well, I found one. So that's been cut. Uh, it's ready to go in and, and that, that's a bigger shape than the hole we've got. So I'll trace around it uh, route my way down and relieve a hole and slip it in just sort of like the, the, what, what we did with these. Now the problem is I'm searching my whole yard cutting up firewood and everything and I can't find any other knots. <laughs> this is the only knot I could find. But it was covered in creosote. Uh, the other side of it was pitch black so I, I cut off a sliver. Luckily I saved the sliver because I've got it now and once that's sanded it'll look practically identical, which is kind of cool. And the sliver is only like three mil thick. And here we have a piece of lychee wood. All right, so I'm gonna glue this to the lychee wood and then cut out a uh, shape like this and, and our solution is here. The nice thing about this also is the, the number eight in, in Chinese is very lucky. And um, we've got seven kinds of wood right now. What you're looking at is seven kinds of wood. Whatever that mystery wood is in back, then you've got walnut, then you've got hemlock, Chinese hemlock, then you've got teak, and you've got um, ironwood there, as well as elm. So that's uh, seven kinds of wood. Now we've got lychee. That makes it eight kinds of wood. You won't be able to see it from the top, but you can see it from the bottom, and in my book that counts.